and welcome to our surprising seasonal produce virtual cooking class. I am Charlotte, and with me this evening is the wonderful and knowledgeable Scott Tompkins. Aww, thanks for having me. Hey, I'm excited to be here. It's not a virtual cooking class without you. Oh. Just gonna say it. You as well, Chef. Oh, thank you. I'm ready to go on this journey. I'm on, I got my shoes on. I'm ready All for right. this journey. Well, I'm glad you're gonna go on this journey, and I'm glad everyone else has joined us to go on this journey because I am really excited about this one. So it's we're into May here, and the weather is sort of warming up, right? We're getting into summer, and we all know that Texas summers are pretty hot. Um, but we're also getting into some really delicious fresh produce, right? So like summer produce is wonderful. We have fresh herbs, and we have avocados, and peaches, and stone fruits. I'm very excited. Summer all the fruits, berries. Summer, oh yeah. Yeah, super into it. So um, we decided to do a really fun class about some surprising ways that you can add seasonal produce to your recipes. So today, the recipes that we're doing, we are going to do a really fun Texas twist to a lobster roll. So we're going to do a chipotle um, lobster salad, and we're going to serve this on some wonderful um, bakery hot dog buns. We are going to make a fantastic burrata stone fruit and strawberry salad. So um, I'm all about this, right? Um, stone fruit is in season. Unfortunately, we could not find peaches um, because you know we have freezes and things like that. So this the weather's been kind of kind of weird. But we did find cherries, and cherries are a stone fruit, and they are coming into season right now. So cherries are going to be a beautiful addition to this um, recipe. And the burrata, burrata is so wonderful. So those of you that don't know what burrata is, um, it is mozzarella, but it is a beautiful mozzarella that is um, filled with a wonderful, rich, delicious cream, and it is almost like dessert. Super excited about this. If I um, can make a comparison in the mozzarella burrata world. I always like to say, like, mozzarella, great cheese. Everybody yes. knows it. Very mild. It's like the yes. cheese for melting and all that stuff. Well, yes. burrata is like, burrata went away on a, uh, on, to boarding school. To and finishing got the finest, school. To finishing school. Got the finest education. Came okay. back. And then when you taste burrata next okay. to mozzarella, you notice there's a very noticeable difference. Yes. That's what I like to say. It is delicious. Delicious. It's like stainless steel and platinum. Burrata yeah. is the platinum. The yeah, I like that. That'll All work. right. And then to finish off um, this evening, we are going to do a guacamole with walnuts and pomegranates. And yes, I did call it guacamole. Um, here in Texas, if it's avocado, it's guac, right? Or at least oh, yeah. in my world. Um, but I love this recipe because um, the crunch from the walnuts and the pomegranates, it's a very, very beautiful recipe. Um, if you guys are cooking along um, with us, um, I'm super excited. If you have any questions, um, don't forget to hit up Scott in the chat. We will answer those questions in real time. And if you just have any comments, I'm here for them. Uh, you guys ready? I'm ready. Ready. Go okay. I have my follow. recipes here. I just, just in case, I just like to have them I'm ready to follow. on standby. Yeah, you gotta have your, gotta have your instructions ready. Right? Yes. Okay. So we are going to uh, cook some lobsters in real time, right? So um, I got, I picked up two lobsters today from the seafood market. These guys right here. And what we're gonna do is we are going to boil these guys. Now you can steam lobsters if you have like a steamer basket, um, but it's totally fine to boil them. Um, in fact, I do it all the time and you just, we're just gonna submerge them in the water. But what you wanna do, I've got these guys right here and I wanna show them to you. They come in this bag and you can ask the seafood, um, the seafood partner to put them on ice for you. You definitely, um, if anybody, tuned into our crawfish class. You don't want to submerge them in water. You don't need to purge them. They don't need to go into the bathtub or the swimming pool. They just need to be really cold um, and dry, right? And just put them in the fridge on the ice and they'll get kind of lethargic and a little bit sleepy, all right? And this is how um, I like to do the lobsters. They come with, um, they come with their claws and rubber bands. Um, that's to protect you and protect them that's when they're together. <laughs> Keep the <laughs> rubber bands on. on them, not gonna hurt anything. Right, and they're just like this, right? So here are the lobsters, just in here like this, and just like that, all right? So I've got some water on the stove, salted water, um, heavily salted with a bunch of lemons in there. Um, it may impart a little flavor in there. Um, I like to do it and it's just sort of, you know, when I boil seafood, it's something that I do. So let's throw these guys in here and we're gonna put them in the, directly into the boiling water, make sure you have enough water to cover them. And we're gonna cook them for about eight to nine minutes. So I would say it's like eight minutes per pound-ish. Yeah, it's like seven to nine minutes a pound, yeah. I think is probably like, seven you know, like everything has a, 
has a has a weight, but I think it also depends on, you know, you talked about putting them in the fridge. I, mean, I think we talked about putting them yep. in the fridge to kind of like get them a little sleepy night night time before you toss them in the water. So they're kind of you know like in shock. Um, the best way to do, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna do fresh lobsters, the best way to do it is that, like you said, buy them the same day. Yep. Use them and throw them in the water. Um, throw them in that pot. Cook them up. Ten minutes later, perfect. So we're going to let these guys, we're going to bring them up, up to a boil. So it's going to take a few minutes because they have been on ice. So the temperature of our water has definitely dropped. And we're going to bring it back up to a boil and then to about um, medium. So it should be, like, a, like Scott said, seven to nine minutes. These lobsters were about, about a pound each. Now, a pound of lobster meat, I'm sorry, a pound of lobster will give us about between eight to seven ounces. So two lobsters would be good to get a pound. Um, if lobster is not your thing, this lobster roll um, or lobster salad recipe is like perfect for shrimp or even crab. Um, right next to my pot, I have um, an ice bath. When these guys come out, we're gonna go directly from the pot and into the ice bath, and that's going to like halt all cooking, right? Stop the cooking process. Um, like when we blanch something, um, Perfect. All right. So while that's happening, Charlie, we had a quick question. We go ahead. Actually, Cami wants to know what's the difference between warm water and cold water lobster. I can only find cold water lobster at HB. That's probably you're only always going to be able to find cold water lobster. Tail we do at sell um, the tails. We sell of warm water because warm water lobster tails only have the tail meat. There's not. There's no claws typically in warm water lobster tail or warm water lobsters. You'll find the cold water lobsters have the claws and everything else, so it's just a difference in Yeah, so we sell the, the, the spiny lobster tail, and it's from, um, I believe, cold water lobsters all Atlantic, Yeah. right? And then, okay, so a lot, a lot, that's a tongue twister. While our lobster is cooking, we are going to prepare the dressing for um, the lobster salad. So it's, you know, I found that like as I do research and like dive into these recipes and like get to know these ingredients, I find that like lobster salad or lobster rolls, it's it's very personal, right? So like depending on where you're from or how your mom made them is how you how you like them. Um, same with like you know we talked about that when we did the crawfish boil, right? So like how your mom taught you or how your dad did it, it's really cool, right? I'm. I'm Carol never taught me how to make a lobster roll. She never well, did. I'm so I sorry. I don't know how to make Some it. People, this is new to me. I'm excited. <laughs> some people like just, you know, lobster, butter, chive, right? And then some people like mayonnaise and celery and celery leaf and celery salt. Some people want Old Bay, right? Some people want it served on like a hearty bun. Some people want it on a hot dog bun. So it's all like, it's personal preference. And that's what I like about cooking. It's all personal preference. So if preparing the lobster or steaming the lobster is not your thing, um, I had our seafood partner steam these lobsters um, fresh this morning. So like if, if you don't want to waste the time, if you don't want to mess with it, or if it's just not your thing, you're not sure how to do it, you can always have um, the seafood partner steam the lobster for you. It takes about 10 minutes and there's no extra charge. And he puts them in this really cute little tray, just like this, and then you're ready to go, right? I like it, yeah. And that's yeah. a great thing about HEB, obviously. You walk up to the seafood counter, yeah. you can get, most HEBs will have the lobster tank. You can pick yep. up your own lobster or you could, if you don't want to do the cooking lobster at home by yourself, you feel like it's too messy or too weird, right. you can always get them to steam it for you there. They Absolutely. wrap it up just like you said. Or you can buy the frozen lobster tails also in the seafood. So it's kind of like yeah. there's a myriad of ways to do totally. it. Totally. Totally. All right. So in the bowl, what we're going to do is we are going to add some cilantro. We're going to do some um, lime juice, lime zest, right? So instead of that traditional lemon, you know, we're going to do the lime, which I love. And I love the zest. I like the lime because we get that essence, right? or the, the zest, it's super good. And then um, we're gonna add in some chipotle, some cilantro, and of course, some mayonnaise, right? The I recipe- you're using our fancy kitchen and table borosilicate. I just wanna, I like to say borosilicate. I think you just I like, like to say borosilicate, yeah. So I feel like I just wanna say it as much as I can to hit the point home. Fantastic bowl. Ooh, this lime Heavy. smells so good. All right. This is a great, I love the lime zest addition to this lobster. No, I love it. It really is going to give it a fresh. Add some color. But really, like, the zest is where all that, like. It's very Baja California of you. I'm is very, it? like, I'm very is impressed it? right now. Well, this I'm feeling like, very cool then. All right, we'll do a little. My West Coast roots a little bit. The juice. All right. It's all that good flavor. For sure. We've also talked about, like, I'm not a big, like, mayonnaise. Okay. Like, emulsified sandwich fan. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm with you on this. My, my opinion of mayonnaise is like a bathing suit. 
just enough to hold it together, just enough to cover it. All right, that's how I feel about it. I, I don't right? think I've ever heard that said like that, but you know what? I'm going to use that for a lot of different so the, descriptors. But I again, it goes it back to personal preference. If you want, so if you need full coverage mayonnaise, then you do full coverage mayonnaise. All right. <laughs> but I'm like going to put a snuggy. Like it's kind of like the snuggy at the beach. Like if you that's how you want your mayonnaise in this. You I, know, you know okay, snuggy. that's okay. All right, we are going to add some red onion, and I'm probably going to do about half of this. Um, to cut a red onion, I'm going to show you real quick. So we take off the um, we take off the flowering or the stem end, the tip, and then we we leave the root end intact. And um, we actually have a really cool video of this on our YouTube channel, so YouTube.com/hev. It's like it's how to cut an onion. You can watch it a whole bunch of ways. And then practice, practice, and practice, makes practice, perfect. practice. Do it over and over and over again. So I'm going to see. Can y'all see that? Y'all have a good angle. You oh certainly yeah. We do. All right. Are so, you kidding? Rob's got that. He's got right? that angle dialed in right now. Like this is a really good sharp knife. You want right? to use a very sharp knife always. For sure. And then I'm gonna go back check those lobsters. There we go. Cat's paw, knuckles tucked. Cat's paw, and I like to do them. Oh man, we had these knives sharpened. This is like slicing warm butter. I'm oh, into yeah. it. Sharp knives. Sharp knives. Uh, I love an aromatic, like a red onion or a yep. shallot, or shallot, into any kind of like seafood style Absolutely. salad. I'm a big fan. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape these into the bowl, just like this. I'm going to go check our lobsters really quickly, just make sure everybody's okay. Make sure everybody's doing, doing all right. I'm going to turn this down. It's come, it's come nice back to red? a boil. Oh, sky cam. What? Sky cam. Look at that. Oh, that's, Come on. Look at that. Lobster, All right. lobster. I can smell it from here. Oh, I love the smell. It smells amazing, lobster. right? So we got a little bit of red onion in there in the mayonnaise. We've got our lime zest. And now we're going to add some cilantro. And when I chop cilantro, I just do like the whole thing. Like I don't even mess around. Stems and all, no big deal. Um, and we're going to rough chop this. They're tender S enough. Yeah, save a little bit of that um, cilantro because we're going to use that for garnish. I like all the flavors here. You've got that chipotle. You're keeping with our southwestern kind of South Texas theme. A yes. little cilantro, a little chipotle. Now, if you don't like smoked chilies, Chef, yes. what, would you, what would you substitute? If you're like, I don't really like the smoky flavor of a chipotle. Obviously, a chipotle is just a smoked jalapeno. Would you? What, what other peppers would you suggest? Um, for, that's a great for, question. So if you don't want any spice at all, just skip it. You don't even need it. Um, it. It won't really miss it. But you could also do like fresh jalapeno. Some of those Fresno chilies would be really nice in that um, and also have that great color. Um, really anything. If you wanted to, you could just put a little like Tabasco, right? Love so like it. that cayenne type. Love it. Sandy just asked, how do you recommend cleaning cilantro before using? So Sandy, this is my, this is my thing, Sandy. That's a great question. I would, uh, I would tell you that just kind of either just rinse it quickly under cold water or kind of submerge it in a bowl of water, just kind of shake yep. it around just to get any of the sand out of there, any of that kind of stuff out of there would be the best way to do it. That is a, that's the perfect way to do it. I like it. Okay, um, so we are going to do some Chipotle and I'm gonna put on a glove and they come in various size cans. Um, I'm just gonna, I bought the little can. Do y'all want a lot of Chipotle or a little Chipotle? It says, calls for two. Uh, you know, I love, I love Chipotle flavor. I love the I smokiness, I love the pepper, but I'm always a little like, the spice is always where I kind of have to go. Oh, really? Start sweating, you know what I mean? Like I get that, okay. I'm, not a, I'm kind of a spice wuss, if you would. I'm not a bona fide Texas spice. All right, we'll just do one person. guy. Oh, they have this wonderful sweet, like, I love Smelter. the smell of Chipotle's. Yes. I love the flavor. I right. just, the spice sometimes can be a little right. too much for me. I put one in there. How's that? One. That'll work. Okay, chef. All right, we got one guy in there. Do a quick little cleanup. Move these guys out of the way. So all that's going to sit there. Now you're going to, once you add all this together, I notice you're obviously the lobster's not quite done yet. Not you're gonna quite. You're going to kind of allow this to kind of sit together and. Yes. So what we're going to do. Become close. Get yes. To know each other. So we're going to mix everything up and we're going to let all of this sort of marry, right? So what we're going to do is when you let things sit, um, the longer they sit, the more they have time to like bloom and I guess like macerate, I guess what we call if it was the berries or something like that. But all the flavors sort of come together. It's sort of like the way like meatloaf and lasagna are better the next day. Yeah, that their personalities yeah. start to rub off on one another. For sure. All right. So... 
throw this, we're gonna take this to the fridge. I'm gonna check on those guys real quick. I'm gonna leave that in there. All right. Love this. The lobsters are, I bet these guys are done actually. They smell like they're getting really close. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let them go for two more minutes. It's not that big of a deal if we overcook these guys because we're gonna cut it a little, we're gonna cut them and um, put them in this sauce. They'll be beautiful. Yeah, and they're also, you have to kind of account for, if you put them in the freezer, like if you kind of yes. did the thing as she said, you, you would throw it all together and kind of go, if you took them out of the freezer, obviously they're gonna need a little more time than the seven to nine minutes normally. So just know that you may have to add a little bit of time to get them fully cooked. All right. Cammie, Cammie asked, does the dressing need salt? My answer, Cammy, always yes. Yes, Should. that is a great, that's a great um, question. I'm gonna season that at the end. But that was a great, great question, yes. Another great question for you, Chef. Panelists ask, how do you know when a lobster is done? So What's that's your... also another great question. Um, there's a couple of ways you can tell. So like the way the head kind of separates from the tail a little bit, um, which is sort of happening over there. Um, the color that they turn, obviously, is that really bright color. Um, and then it's sort of going to be like, a, like turkey, right? Um, like a turkey in the oven, you can go by the time, so the temperature and time by weight, um, and you can also use a meat thermometer, right? So like 155 is usually where we wanna go. But great question. All right, so we are getting ready for our burrata um, with stone fruit, and I'm just getting all of our ingredients together um, over here. So what we are going to do, there's a lot of stuff on that tray. <laughs> It's a lot of things. A lot of things came off that tray. So, um, uh, right here, cherries. So like I said, we couldn't find any um, peaches, but cherries are stone fruit and cherries are in season. And so, um, super, super easy. Does, anybody, does everybody have a cherry pitter? If anybody, like a, one of these guys, if you do not have one, I highly recommend investing in a cherry Absolutely. pitter. They're super easy, they make, um, Pitting cherries or olives like super duper quick and easy. And to pit a cherry, um, super, super, super simple. Um, peel the, wash them, peel the stem off. And then most people, when they do a cherry, they like to go um, through like the stem part right yep. here. So can you see that? But I don't like to do that. I like to do it from the side because when you do it from the side, Oh man, that went so more. well in rehearsal. <laughs> wah, wah. Hey, that's why we test things, That's right? right. So what happens is when you do that them to the, the side, the seed comes out really easily. Um, comes out should the side, I do it again? You get a little more food, you get a little surface, yes. Um, Courtney said, uh, my favorite comment so far, oh my God, I love Hood River cherries. Uh, and she also said, my favorite home gadget, yes. Uh, oh, Courtney, twice. Hood River cherries are awesome. <laughs> yes, okay, so I, last year I, I bought pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of Hood River cherries. They're good. And um, I was peeling, I was seeding them by hand. So I bought one of these guys. Yeah. It's like the best investment. And then I sat there all day and I was like. Now, the other way you can right? pit a cherry is if you want to do it, you can put trash bags all over your house yes. and your kitchen, cover yourself in a trash bag and take a bunch of heavy pots and just smash the cherries and get the pits out that way. That's not recommended, obviously, but if you want to have a little fun with the kids, you want to decorate the, uh, the the kitchen and some trash bags. You can go to town and get Hood River cherry juice everywhere and then eat them and then throw away the pits. All right, I'm pulling these guys out. I'm submerging them in our ice. They look beautiful. Yeah, and you're right. We bring up some great points because because we like to eat the seasons, obviously, and there's so much of our produce yes. can be seasonal and so much of our great produce that you'll find locally to be is sourced locally. Obviously, you know, if it's not the time, there's a bunch of different ways Absolutely. you can get those fresh fruits. So like we can always do the, the IQF or the individually quick frozen in our frozen freezer section, the great fruits, uh, great fruits like that, like the peaches, um, canned peaches and always an idea. Otherwise just substitute like you're going to do with the different fruits. There's way to, ways so, to do anything. That's really a great point. So um, seasonal produce um, or Obviously, it's for seasons, right? So different seasons, different things grow. We definitely live in a global economy and different things grow in different places. So seasons are different. Um, things can, um, you know, it, it may be apple season here, but it could be, you know, 
Here's yeah. a great example. Pomegranates, not necessarily in season here in Texas, but they do, like in Chile, they're growing tons of pomegranates right now. So if you can't find the things that you're looking for, there's always ways to adapt the recipes. And this is what I really love about cooking is that, like, we a recipe is a guideline, right? So we just, you know, here's our suggestion. But as you get more familiar with the recipe and as you experiment and get more, more familiar with, like, seasonal ingredients or just ingre ingredients in general, you you you're able to change and swap things, right? So this particular recipe I, I had a lot of fun with because we couldn't find peaches. But I thought to myself, what are things that, that taste like peaches or what are things that are in season like peaches? And I came, like the ideas that I came up with were mangoes, right? So like mangoes, tropical fruits are still in season right now. And mangoes are beautiful. From a texture perspective, they're, they're very similar, right? They're meaty, they have um, very similar, right? They're a little bit sweeter, but there's also some tartness, just the way like a peach would be. Um, beets, roasted golden beets. So um, I have some beets that I brought and I roasted a couple. Um, they have, as they roast, they get really, really sweet. But from a texture perspective, when they're roasted, they're soft, but they also have a little firmness to them. So you can definitely um, switch things around to find things that A, you like, and B, are available. And so this recipe is absolutely like, adjustable, I yeah. guess. Like, and switch it up for the season. Yeah. So like during the, during the winter season, yeah. you know, when there's some great, you know, you have the, let's say you have the blood oranges or whatever, so you can do some great citrus. You can do, you know, summertime, you do stone fruits, a spring, you do the tropical Absolutely. fruit. Absolutely. Like, you Absolutely. can really kind of taste this however you want to do it. And then in the fall, obviously you've got some apples and that great stuff. So I love this hundred um, percent. I'm a weird when it comes to stone fruit chef and you give me your opinion. I like to eat, I only eat, now my daughter only does the same thing. I don't like mushy stone fruit. Like I don't like soft peaches. I don't like okay. soft nectarines. I only eat them when they're hard because I love the texture and I love that the, the sugars like, aren't fully yeah. always developed. Okay. And so I love the crunch that it adds For to sure. salads, everything else. So we're just I'm just a big like crunchy stone fruit fan. I'm weird like that. Okay. Totally weird, but I like I just try it. If you haven't done it, try it. Um they're crisp. I like that. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I can appreciate it. So in this recipe, the strawberries. So um Burrata being that fresh mozzarella, um, typically people associate like, you know, the, the fresh mozzarella with like pizzas and, but like the caprese salad, right? So that beautiful, like soft, kind of like chewy, delicious, creamy cheese with that super, super acidic um, bite from the tomato and then that balsamic vinegar. Um, something that I learned when um, I was in California, they grow a lot of strawberries in California, um, also in Poteet, but... Um, the acid from a strawberry goes really, really well with the creamy creaminess of that um, mozzarella, right? So it's almost like it's almost like um, strawberries and cream, right? Yep. Like this re peaches and cream, cherries and cream, right? So they 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 mirror each other or complement each other really, really, More really well. More savory, almost. So you get a little bit yeah. of that savory note with it. It's um, super nice. Cami had a great thing. She used canned peaches. Cami, if you've got really sweet canned peaches or if the syrup is a little heavy, I just like to soak them in a little bit of water. So you can kind of rinse those off if yep. you need to to kind of like drain some of the sugar out if you need to. That's always an option. Soak them in a little water and then same thing with frozen. You could just soak them in a little bit of water to kind of rehydrate them and then add them the same way. Because you're going to use a balsa. Oh, did I, I cheated. I went ahead. I, went, I saw what you're using, chef, and I jumped ahead because I'm a big fan of what you're about to put in all that. Um, the balsamic. Yep. Okay, so um, for this particular, so for the strawberries or the cherries, if you wanted to cut them smaller, you definitely could. So say if we wanted to serve this like a bruschetta or like a salsa style, you could cut them smaller. Or if you wanted them to be bigger um, for like more of a plated or um, salad like that, totally fine and totally up to you. I'm just sort of quartering these guys. Um... It's really up to you and how you want to um, serve it, but there's no right or wrong way to do it. And then I'm gonna show you really quickly about these um, these beets. I wanna show you what they look like because uh, I'm really excited about them. And they I smell- I love beets. I mean, beets and burratas, yes. like that's my, that's a, that's a, that's my love language. That's one of my go-tos. I so love we'll the sweetness when you roast them. These look great, that's good. Strawberries are making me happy. Strawberries are definitely making me happy. So for the roasted beets, the golden beets, super easy, guys. Yeah, will you take guys. us through this, Chef, as we're not, you know. The what? Wasn't part of it. Like, will you, will you walk us through your, your No, um, I was, well, I was trying to find a substitution for the peaches, and I kind of panicked, and I didn't know what to do. So I decided to do these, to do the beets. But if you, you can see in here, it's kind of dark. But this is just a, like, you know, barbecue foil, the Texas Tough barbecue foil. And um, I just took the regular golden beets, just like this. You see right here. I pulled off the greens. 
and I gave them a wash and I threw them directly into this foil. Olive oil, salt, that's it. 400 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I didn't want to, you want to make sure not to go overcook them, but it's just like baking a potato, right? And then um, I took them out. They're definitely tender, fork tender. And the skin, you can see, has sort of separated from that beet. And I'm going to show you really quickly how yeah, we them cool. peel them. Kind of steam, the skin, you just, they're so oh, easy to wipe so off. It's so good. Should we put some in there? Y'all want to put some in the salad? Yeah. Okay. Anytime you roast a beet, I feel like, and we've done this fast for quick yes. service things that to do turnarounds where we, you can boil them too and they'll, they'll get softer a little faster. But I feel like anytime you have the time, Look at this. roasting anything just concentrates the sugars and makes so them so beautiful. much better. Okay, so all I'm doing is taking this beet and I'm just putting it into a clean dish towel and gently with my thumbs, I'm pulling, look at this, the skin just comes, like I'm pulling it away. Super easy, right? Oh my God, it almost looks like a peach. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm so excited. Look at that. It's I absolutely beautiful. I'm a, I don't know. I love gold. I love the, uh, right? the, the Chioga beets. beets. I love that. That's candy stripe beets, which are hard to find. I do love red beets because I love the color yeah. of the uh, just what it does to things and like the marinating yeah. liquid and all that. Gold beets are, are totally acceptable as we all I'm going to put this beets. in the salad, y'all. It's Less happening. staining, I would say. When you got They're all that cleaner. Red, gold yes, beets are for way sure. To go with all that red. Look at that. Okay. So. I'm going to put this in the bowl, and in our bowl, I'm going to add some salt and pepper, and I'm going to add our olive oil and some of our balsamic. And I am using an aged balsamic. We're just going to... From Italy. From Italy. From the so, Modena region yeah, of Italy. Central Market, aged balsamic vinegar of Modena. It's beautiful. It's like this has sugar. been aged. And so as it ages, it concentrates, and all that flavor, all of that like beautiful, like, caramelized yeah. like oh yep. my god it's so good and it also has a really really beautiful texture so i'm gonna add a little bit into here look yeah, at that it like, comes uh, out like, like cho chocolate, like chocolate yes. syrup. that's why i love that All one right. the most i'm gonna when add you, this was kind of cold it was in the refrigerator but i'm gonna when add you some walk of that into most hebs i think most hebs will have when you go to the aisle with all the vinegars yep. and all the oils and everything you have uh the set of kind of like the balsamic vinegar yep. and so you have the different ages like there's like the the one star, two star, three star, four leaf, I think they call them leaves actually, and the four leaf. And that one, above all else, that the one that's a little more expensive, I think is $16.99 we sell, which is a great price. Yep. If you think about balsamic vinegars of that texture are typically like $30 to $40 or even higher. Some of them are even $100 uh, for a jar of a very small jar. This one, for what it delivers, is a absolute total oh. value for 16 bucks. And that one is like, it literally is. It's like chocolate syrup. It, it, it is. is. It's amazing. fantastic. If, you know, if 16 bucks is out of your price range, you could definitely use the other, um, the other balsamics, but then there's also some, we sell balsamic reductions. So like glazes, the reedy balsamic, yep. the glazes, Redone. and those are absolutely acceptable and those fit in anybody's budget. They're like three or $4. They're absolutely fantastic. Okay. So in the bowl, we've got, um, we added our, our golden beets. We've added our cherries and we added our strawberries. We added salt, pepper, and then that beautiful balsamic. And we're going to let this sit for a little while, right? We're going to put this back in the fridge. And to finish it off, we're going to add in the mint, which is absolutely amazing in this. Um, and then we're going to add in our burrata. And I have the burrata right here because I just want you all to see. Um, they look like little poached eggs, right? They're, abs they're so cute. Um, I like to dry them off before I add them um, to the dish simply because I don't, when they're dry, the like, all that juice that's been macerating in this bowl kind of sticks to them and it's absolutely perfect, all right? So I'm gonna leave those there and we're gonna put this in the fridge and we are going to go to... I feel like burrata could be served with anything. Yeah, on anything. I think I agree with you, I agree with you. All right, we are going to go to our avocados and we are gonna make our, our guac. The guacamole. Now, I'm going to throw a lot of, uh, you know, I'm an amateur uh, nutritionist. Of course. Slash doctor. So yes. I've got a lot of facts I'm going to throw at you, I can't chef. wait. And you can, Super you know, excited. tell me, you know, where, whether they're true or not. Again, amateur nutritionist slash doctor. So I do a lot of my own okay. self diagnosis. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it As we first, all do. Uh, but I love, you're using a lot of great ingredients. And I would, yes. I would say from the out, just, just from a, a glance at all the stuff you're using, very healthy stuff. Yes? Yes. No? Yes. Nobody ever died from eating too many vegetables. Unless you're anaphylactically allergic. Okay. Well, I hope not. <laughs> that's, a so that's a different story. Probably going to get sued now because I said that. But. <laughs> 
well, adding fruits what, to you know, and vegetables to your an, diet an is always a good idea. <laughs> and that this is almost like, you know, stealth health or like sneaky, but it's not. We're using wonderful produce to like enhance your experience. Yes. So I think it's great. Um, okay, secret ingredient to our guac or our delicious guacamole avocado spread is our... Um, Pomegranates, right? And so the tricky thing about pomegranates, well, there's also some other great ingredients. So we're going to add walnuts and spinach to this. Um, but the tricky thing about pomegranates is trying to get the seeds out, right? Um, you can definitely buy the seeds already or the um, arils already removed, alone, yep. seeded. Um, you can also find these guys frozen. And I'm going to show you something really quick. We have this really cool product. If you can't find pomegranates, yeah, and Cammie, this is what we talked about earlier, where you talked about like not being able to find peaches and pomegranates. The great thing is you take a little stroll down your fruit frozen section, yes. you can find these little bad boys. These are, this right here, so these are called Juicy Gems, and these are IQF um, pomegranate arils. Absolutely wonderful. They are amazing in cocktails. Put them on top of salads, in smoothies, whatever. Um, but IQF, you can use as little or as much as you want, and they maintain their integrity. So sometimes when you get frozen fruit, um, it tends to, like, as it thaws, like weep almost and kind of get soggy, but these these maintain their integrity. It's super great. It's because they're IQF. Great Individually products. Individually quick frozen is yes, what IQF chef. means. If That's you're what that Courtney, means. Bam! I was on there. I felt there you. you I felt you asking Courtney, like what what do they keep on around this word IQF? Independent, individually quick frozen, which yes. is what a lot of our fruits, which is great because. Like Chef Charlie just said, if you can't find a fresh pomegranate, now there were a few at stores, there's a few pomegranate less, but as they are going out, yes. there's a, you can always go to the frozen fruit section of your HEB and find them both organic and regular, but they're picked at the peak of freshness and then they're individually quick frozen yes. for freshness. So you can always use That's those. That's it. That's it. Okay, so our pomegranate. So to, um, if you want a really cool video, we have another video of this on our YouTube channel. So it's youtube.com slash HGB, but shows you how to cut a pomegranate. So in case you missed it here and you want to just revisit that. But I'm going to show you really quickly. So basically, you're going to cut the pomegranate across the acorn the equator all right equator. so Great the equator word. right so here would be the part where the the fruit is attached to the tree and then this part is where is the blossom end we're just going to cut it straight down the middle Ooh. i love this technique selfishly charlotte Ooh, did y'all see that it looked great, awesome it's a great way to get it's a little cathartic you know what i mean like being right? able to uh to do there's certain things that you can do in cooking that just give you a little bit of joy and this is one of those things for me so you can see what it looks like on the inside. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Now, there are some ways um, people can say to cut a pomegranate where it's like you cut it into water and you, you know, smash into water and the seeds float in the pith and whatever. Um, personally, not a fan of that because I like all this juice, right? So all that juice is wonderful flavor and I want to capture that. So um, I just do it over a bowl and you can see how, so see how it's like, this one's kind of pithy, that the white stuff is called the pith. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna squeeze it a little bit and sort of loosen it up like you would a, um, like a lime, right? Before yeah. you squeeze it. And then with a spoon, I'm gonna use this metal spoon. You can use a wooden spoon, whatever. You basically just hit it on the back. Now, Gentle. and see how the seeds start to come out? You will get some of the pith, like some of the pith will come out. You're just gonna have to pick that out, no big deal. Um, you're going to hit it, and at first you're going to be kind of, like, tender and, like, you know, do it very gingerly. Um, but don't be afraid. You're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive with it. Just sort of squeeze it and turn it. you got to be a little forceful it. with the Yeah, uh, with the as arrows. you go, Sometimes no big deal. Stay in there, little cabby, no little, big homes. deal. Right? Let's see, some of that pith is coming yeah, out. A wooden spoon works great. But this is a way to capture all the juice. And honestly, this, this way yes. is really simple. Now, you can obviously, you can also cut them into quarters yeah. and do it. I feel like it's just... Right? This is a little more fun. This is kind of more direct. This it just kind of gets fun. everything out there a little easier. I mean, the white not? pith comes in little spots versus kind of, you know, having to tear it all apart. And if you have little people, like if you have kids and you want to give them a safe job, like that doesn't involve a knife or anything hot, this is a great one. But look, so we have a minimal amount of pith in our bowl and we're maximizing the amount of seeds. Like this one actually came out really beautifully and, and I'm super I like super what you're doing excited. there, Chef. It's a great tip. As you're, as, you're, as you're knocking them out, the ones that are stuck a little further in there, you just kind of slowly just kind of, you know, Open up the yeah. pomegranate by your hand, just kind of loosening them up. Totally so it okay. Gets more... Look, perfect. This is so fantastic. I'm super happy about that. 
All right, so we're gonna put this aside. Let me clean up my board a little and bit. And you've got the juice all collected. All collected. It's the same way I feel about like when people, like when you roast a pepper, like when you fire roast a pepper, you never want to rinse that under water, unless of course it fell on the floor, I don't, you know, or threw it yeah. in the trash. But like all still. those good charred bits, all that flavor, like you want to keep that. You throw it in the trash. If you drop it on the floor, you throw it in the trash. I do is when pomegranate season is in full bloom, I typically will take like six pomegranates home and I'll just do like a, a session where I'm like cutting and spanking all these pomegranates to get all the beautiful arrows out. Okay. I said it. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're getting a little, you did say them a little tapping. There's nothing okay. wrong with that. Well, that's how I Some am with gentle. the cherries. I buy them all and then I pit them yeah. and then you can freeze them and do all sorts of great things with them. All right. So next for this, we are going to do our avocados, right? And I am going to take a nod from Scott Tompkins' book, and I am going to I use... I have a book? I wrote a book? You wrote a book, Tompkins. I like it. Apparently, you've written a couple of them. I am going to use our roasting rack to press our avocados. Charlotte, is that a K&T roasting baking it is. rack? It is. I actually thought this was a really good idea. You did it the other day, and I, I think it's a fantastic idea. Okay. Really easy to cut an avocado. Um, oh man, these are the large hoss. Yeah, they're all pretty good. Like all the avocados are pretty Check good. So, hey, look, you got to squeeze a lot of avocados. Find the ones you need. You know what I mean? Don't be shy. I don't know if you've heard this, but Scott has manhandled every avocado in the HEB. So we're probably, probably, and so. he's not. Where you shop? Probably. <laughs> so we're just going to put the knife in, and we're going to go again around the equator. No big deal. And then you just twist it. Ooh, see, that's a good one. Man, how can you hate it? I, I, I just, I love avocado. It's like one of my favorite things, avocados. You know, every now and then I meet someone that, that hates avocado and I'm first shocked. Right. And then once I catch my breath and get my sense and wits about me again, Look, uh, it's a like texture ginger, thing. I don't like gingerbread. You know what I mean? Like, so everybody's People, got their thing. You don't like gingerbread? See, I knew it was going to spur a conversation. <laughs> okay. You know, what? I've that's never, right. if gingerbread men are sitting there or there's no cookie at all, I'll probably maybe have a piece, but I'm not, I'm just not a gingerbread guy. I've just right. never been that, never been that guy. It's all right. That's what avocados, makes the world go around. All, over it. all right. So we got some avocados just like this, went around the equator. We're going to give them a twist. And then to take the seed out, you just gently tap it and again, twist. Now you can use your thumb to take this out, but I typically, I don't have a trash can. Um, I just like, like to tap it. it across the room. Just tap oh, okay, it on like the side of the counter or on the side of the sink and it comes out. It's just to keep your hands protected. Yeah, because the avocado flesh is as soft as your hands, and the knife will go straight yes, through both. Yes, will go straight through. Okay, so um, somebody brought me this tool, and I'm super into it, and I want to see what it does, simply because, wait, where did I put it, y'all? It's is called... It the avocado... Oh, yeah. Scoop and Slice, but I really liked it because <laughs> the, the company that makes it is called Chef and Vibe. Chef and, Chef and vibe. So I really so, want to see. I want to see if it does a thing. I've used Can it. I think it. It's a great. We saw it at HEB. Obviously, we'll it's a good tool. Yeah. It doesn't fit on all the avocados. It doesn't, as well. but it's gonna fit. It. You can sort of squeeze it. No, you can squeeze it. But I want to just sort of. Kind of make it. I want to see what happens. Let's see how it works. Full endorsement. Full. Get it. Endorsement. You got it. Bam. Um, Sliced. The good thing is it's ah. also not a sharp blade, right? So you can obviously do your fingers. That's safe for all people that use there it. You go. Yes. I mean, I'll give it a seven out of 10. I think it's fun. All right, so what we're gonna do though, for us to get our avocado in our bowl, we are, I'm gonna put a glove on. We are gonna use the Scott Tompkins method. Tried and true, Scott Tompkins method. That way you don't have to be a perfect dicer to just nope. put it over there and just smash it through. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I don't want this completely mashed. Like I don't want it to be like, I want it to have some chunk and some bite to it. All right. Yeah. So Texture. to get these guys out, very easy. I'm just going to take a spoon. Now, Charlotte, just playing devil's yes. advocate. If you are one of those folks who likes your guacamole completely pureed like sauce, yeah. is this a acceptable? Can you do that on this one? Is this 100%, work with all that stuff? 100%. And then you just fold in the Absolutely. walnuts. Absolutely. Yes. So okay. I'm just going to pop these guys out with a spoon. Oh man, these are really pretty. This is where the kids can absolutely get involved because they can be, you can be scooping yeah. and cutting and they can be smashing them through this. Yeah, right? Like rack. this. Okay. Have y'all seen this before? Watch. Bloop. Come on. There that. is something so satisfying <laughs> about pushing avocado. I'm, I'm not even kidding this you. Is like, like, like there's, when you, until you do it, 
you do it and you're like, that was really satisfying. It's really satisfying. <laughs> it's really satisfying. You're not kidding. You're Pushing not kidding. It through, just I really love it, it. It's right? Like, this was I love this. The easiest dice you'll ever do. With it really is. Hand. I wish we had more things that we could push. It's all one the of those um, the... videos, those A those AS ASMR videos where it's yeah. like you watch people smash things or run over things. Okay, beautiful. Is that a thing? Is that a... It is a thing. All like right. people like cut soap and all sorts of crazy stuff. I'm sure there's avocado smashing. All right, this is wonderful. This is that video, Charlotte. This is this that is video. That I'm actually gonna save these two guys for our lobsters. All right. Now. All right. I'm gonna grab myself a trash can. I did everything but grab myself a trash can. There we go, friends. All right. Get rid of all this. Tompkins, have you ever um, grown an avocado tree from a from a pit? Uh, we tried twice to do that. And, and I was... think at some point, we got the little thing flowering, like the little tree kind of sprung yeah. up. But then at some point, it just died. It just didn't do a thing? Look, I'm going to be fully honest with you. I'm a terrible gardener. That's OK. Um, everything I do except the, well, no, even the rosemary died after the freeze. <laughs> so I can't say. I, I think a lot alive. of people lost some fruits it did. and vegetables. The freeze was, you know, typically does not freeze that long for that many days in Texas. And that was crazy. All the stuff to survive. OK, so also to this recipe, we are going to add in some spinach. And I know people say, what, spinach? Spinach, spinach. And, and guac. But trust me, it's absolutely delicious. It, it adds a really great texture to it. And also, I'm going to tell you all a secret. Like, I like to eat a lot of things. And avocados are calorically expensive. They have wonderful, healthy fats in them and lots of vitamins and minerals. But they can have a lot of calories. So sometimes I throw in extra stuff to make something healthier and to bulk it. And also, Pro if tip. I may play uh, my amateur nutritionist role or amateur dietitian role, you good leafy greens, like the dark leafy yes. greens, are stuff you want to consume a lot of, right? Yes, for sure. And anytime you can add leafy greens to your diet, it's a win. You said something earlier about iron and bioavailability. Bioavailability. What, what was that trick again about? What was the, the key ingredients in this? So we talked about that in one of our food synergy classes, um, but the vitamin C in the um, pomegranates actually makes the iron from the leafy greens more bioavail bioavailable. So basically it's like your, um, it's easier for your body to utilize. Does that make sense? It blows my mind about ingredients, yeah. like everything working harmoniously together. Yes. Okay. So cooking, we got folks. spinach, cooking. we got the pomegranates, we got the avocado, and now we are going to add some walnuts. And I know that people are like, oh, walnuts, what? That's crazy. Um, but it's actually delicious. I love it. It adds a beautiful texture, and it adds this really nice bitterness to um, to the guac that that's, pairs really well with that buttery richness. Like, I'm a big fan. I have another, so my, another, I'm going to play the, I'm going to put on my amateur dietitian hat again. Uh, I'm just going to crush I, I was always told that walnuts are shaped like little brains because they also do things that are good for your brain health. Question yeah, so mark? they have a yeah. lot of like healthy brain, fats, like brain, omegas, like so brains. they're good for brain health. They, there's some truth in that, so they look like a brain, so it's just sort of like a visual reminder that, yeah, these are good for walnuts. our, these are good I for our brains. I clearly need way more walnuts in my diet because I, my brain function is not as high as I would like to be. All right, so I That's added right. in, <laughs> I just caught that. I caught that really like on the, <laughs> your brain function is perfect, subtle. Tompkins. All right, subtle. so I'm going to add in some salt to this and some pepper, and then we're just going to mix this up. And I added some um, olive oil to it. Tons of healthy fats in this recipe. So hungry for uh, avocado right now. So pretty. Look right? how pretty that is. So you get all those colors. You get all that, you got all that green stuff going. This is like, this is where you want to be right now. And if you weren't into walnuts, if you're not a walnut fan, throw pistachios in there. That good buttery, oh, like. Or throw all of them in there. Yeah. I love pepitas, Do everything. pistachios, walnuts. Do everything. All right, I'm gonna let this sit um, in the refrigerator. Now, if you were gonna if you were gonna go longer than 15, 20 minutes, I would highly recommend wrapping this with plastic or something like that if you were gonna take this somewhere. But for all intents and purposes, we won't be here that long. I'm gonna it's put good this. as is. Oh, side note, Charlotte, as I'm looking at your at that shot of your your lobster sitting there. Mm -hmm. So you could, if you're at home right now and you're like, okay, I cook my lobsters, yep. they're cooling, I'm gonna put this whole thing together. You have that beautiful poaching liquid on the stove. Yep. Uh, we used to cook 
uh, spaghetti in the leftover lobster poaching liquid to give your spaghetti a really beautiful kind of like underlying lobster yeah. flavor. It's a great way to utilize it if you want to kind of another use for it. You can definitely do that. Um, that is a great idea. And we're also, um, I also recommend saving the shell to lobster. Okay, so this is our dressing, our base for our lobster salad. So it's that mayonnaise, the red onion, cilantro, the chipotle. And now I'm just going to add in these avocados. Ooh, just like that. And I'm using the Scott, the Scott Tompkins method, which I'm a huge fan of. I got a question of. for you, Chef. While yes, we're chef. doing this, while Cami and Courtney have been uh, lighting up the chat and been talking and doing everything that they're doing, um, I want to know for all of us, uh, yeah. Cami and Courtney, what are they... What are you drinking at home while you're doing all this? What are we What are we drinking? Because I'm getting. I'm thirsty, curious too. And I see you've got some contraband up to your left there. I do. I'm gonna call it contraband because it's not near me. So you, uh, what, what what do we? So some me? pairings. We have a couple of wine pairings for you guys. So yeah, um, and some other non-wine pairings. But um, I've got a little brute sparkling white, sparkling wine from France, which is perfect for a lobster roll. There's a place in. Rhode Island called Flo's Clam Shack, and for $52, you can get two hot dogs and a bottle of Veuve Clicquot. That was also like- Also known as the Charlotte Samuel. <laughs> date night, it's for date night, it's two hot dogs. A all right. bottle of Veuve It's Clicquot probably the best deal in the world, and two right? two hot dogs for 50 bucks. That's two like, they dogs. must have known that you were gonna at some point be visiting Rhode Island and go to school there, and they were like, you know who's gonna love this more than anybody? Charlotte Samuel or this every, she'll order it like back to back. Listen, like you'll, you'll be, you'll the it only comes with it two twice. hot dogs. It's for sharing, okay? It's for sharing. Uh, All right, so here are our lobsters. We, I'm going to show you guys how to take the meat out of these guys. It's really easy. It's not intimidating at all. Uh, All right. Charlotte, so right now, uh, Courtney said, she said Sav Blanc spelled with like eight C's to say the Sav Blanc because she's drinking the Sav Blanc. Yes. Also singing rock lobster while learning. So I'm going to say it like this, singing rock lobster. It was a rock. Lobster is how she wrote it. I love it. While I lo learning. I love it, Courtney. Courtney. I love it. I'm here for it. You got to have fun um, doing this. All right. Here are our wonderful lobsters that we boiled. They are absolutely beautiful. Look at that beautiful color. Um, guys. Very Rubber easy to clean. Salon. I'm going to show you guys really quick a couple of things that you're going to need for this. I highly recommend some um, really good kitchen shears and um, a knife and then a couple of dish towels because they are spiny and they can get um, kind of sharp. I am going to put some gloves on. Those look magnificent. Look at the color yeah. on that. Come on. Aren't they look at beautiful? that shot. Rob, get out of here with that. So look at that. Beautiful. It's like zoomed in, lobsters <laughs> resting, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> For the pool of salad, I'm so that's excited. Going to cradle their deliciousness. Did she say she was drinking Sav Blanc? Sav Blanc with lots of C's. And Cammy's drinking yes, and Cammy's drinking Leinen Kugel Summer Shandy just in time for the hot weather. That's a summer great one. What a great, what a great. That's a, that's a perfect drink. That's a perfect drink. You could also do ranch water. Ranch water is also a light, refreshing way. Hang on, like, hang on, hang on, hang on. What? So you. Is that a real t is that a real term, ranch water? Is it is a real, a real term, real? and Scott is from California, so we don't. So hang on. So, so I, I imagine, okay. can I take a shot of what's in ranch water? Yes. Okay. So I go out to the ranch. I have a pond. I dip my flask in the ran in the pond water. Is that the same thing? Is that the same thing as ranch water? Is That's that a it. different? Nailed it. And then it's it bottled oh. at the source, and you can pick it up at H E B. <laughs> so ranch just, water I is sparkling water with a little bit of tequila, and some lime in it. Ah, ah, and it comes in a really handy dandy I'm can, the ways. but it's great for the hot like the hot weather, or just like waiting for you know you're waiting for your guests to come over. All right, really quick about they these like lobsters, ranch water right? And Zoe's drinking gin and tonic, FYI. I am loving all of this. Okay, I want to hear what else people are drinking. Um, okay, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the head or the body from the tail, right? Um, also, if you really wanted to, you could take the meat out of the legs. Um, I feel like it's, you know. It's probably a little more work. It's a more, more work than it's worth for <laughs> me, reward. but don't throw away the bodies or um, any of the shells because they're great for making stock, right? Uh, if you were going to do a lobster yeah. bisque or like a butternut Roast squash those soup. Shells in the oven. I think maybe we'll, sh we'll do oh, an yeah. episode on that um, or a class on that. So really, you're just going to pull these guys away. Just pull that out. Leave those guys in there. All just pop juice. off. Laws. Oh wait, I did it backwards. I'm sorry. I always do that when I'm cleaning shrimp. Inevitably, I put the, I mix up the shells and the. You know, I mean, looking at this recipe, like there's a little bit of easy. work involved in this. If you're going to do it all the way from like live lobster home, but if you're doing just the tails, it's really easy. But it's like, yeah, it's worth it because 
this is, in my opinion, this is one of those recipes where, you know, we're getting toward the warmer weather, summertime, you know, like kids are going to get out of school soon. Like this is a great recipe yep. to start switching up your normal weekday routine. For sure. With. For sure. All right. So here we have our lobster and I'm going to take kitchen shears and I'm just going to go straight down the back. It's the, and it's, give it a little like some pressure. So squeeze it from the bottom. Cut it. Yeah. Be careful not to go into the flesh of your hand again. Sharp sears. Shears. Right. Shears. Sears. I can't, I can't speak. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. And then buy. we're just going to. Um, in talking about the booze again, because I want to go back, because I'm yeah. staring again at your contraband. We talk about ranch water. Uh, everybody said they really like ranch water. I'm educated now as to what yes. ranch water is. It actually sounds pretty good. Yes. Um, you mentioned the Vive Clicquot. The, the, you like sparkling for Love. lobster, right? Love sparkling. I know that's your go-to. Now, Chardonnay, what, like, if we were going to do, like, a like a red-white, like, Chardonnay, like, okay. you want a buttery Chardonnay, French Chardonnay. You and I are pretty diametrically opposed on the Chardonnay front as far we as are. you like the fresh like French style minerality. I like an unoaked Chardonnay. I like the minerality. I like to, you know, to be, you're right. And that's I what I like. Chardonnay with a stick of butter shoved in it. I know you do. So that Scott is into his California, California Malactic. butter bombs, <laughs> butter bombs. All right. So. Malolactic fermentation. Here are our, um, our claws and our, our little elbows right here. So super easy. Um, I just pop the little rubber bands off. And um, every lobster has like a, like a pincher and a smasher, right? So it's got a smaller, thinner one, right? And then it has a smashy guy. Love it. Okay. And so also if you notice, so you can see, um, you can see how these guys have some spines on them and they can really like, you can, you yeah, can actually hurt yourself. Them. So I highly recommend using um, a dish towel. Cammie had a great question. She said, help, I don't have kitchen shears. Cammie, don't worry. Literally, just put the tail of the lobster down. I got gotcha. you. Big, big knife. Just cut it in half very gently, and you can take, you can take the meat out that like way. Like this. Let's pretend. Are you watching, Cammy? Can you Cammie, see me? This is for you. This is for you. So let's pretend this guy was intact, like this. All you would do is just like Scott said, is you would take your knife and you would just straight down, right? And I'm gonna go from this angle over here so you can see it from here, just like this. And then you would just right go up. straight down and open, open this up. guy up. Was that, meat. How was that? Cammie, don't put down your Chardonnay. Put down your Chardonnay to cut it, then pick up your, sorry, your, your Blanc, your Sab Blanc, and then pick it right back up after you're done cutting it. Because this is a recipe you can make with a glass of wine in one hand. For sure. All right, I'm just roughly chopping this, um, the tail summer meat. Shandy. She's drinking the summer shandy. I got that wrong. Summer shandy. Put your summer shandy I'm here down. for it. I love there's it. There's a lot, look, there's a lot of now, cocktails happening okay. in the chat, and I'm, I'm happy All right, for it. here we go. Mixed up. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to remove the arm and leave the claw. Yeah, I would, I'm really curious to show, I want you to show everybody how to do the claw technique, because I don't normally do, I think I just do it the barbarian way, I just smash everything and pull it out. Of course out. you like do. I don't do it the nice, there's a better way. Of course you do. All right. So super, super easy, right? So all I do is I take the guy and see it's like da, 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 right? So I hold this, I hold it like this, and with the back of my knife, I just tap. So just yeah. the way Scott... That's a really important distinction. You said the back of your knife, The, right? back, the back of your, of your knife. knife. So you're not doing the blade. Look at that juice. And just the way Scott cut the coconut, right? You just kind of lightly... And you definitely... It, it's sharp, guys, so and it has spines, so I want you all to be careful when you do it. But you just sort of... Work it out there. Work it out. Boom. Ooh Come on. Let's Look see. at that. And kind of just gently, just like that, throw that in there. That's like great presentation if you wanted to like, if you were doing like a lobster risotto or again, like a butternut squash soup that had like a lobster biscuit and you wanted to like really showcase that lobster, um, the, the claw meat. So again, back of your knife. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll clean all that up. I got it. No, that's a... I got a sandwich. Yes, save all the shells. She, she's putting all the shells in the thing. Save all those shells because they can be roasted and added to many things for Ooh, lots of great flavor. This guy had a strong... Like butter, Ooh. cooking rice, cooking pasta, roasting for stock soups. All right. Come on. Everything was so beautiful in rehearsal. Hey, that's all right. You know, these, you know this, the, it's the nature of, nature of it all. And if you can't get it out, um, I, like a chopstick works really, really well to like push things through. That's a great tip. Right? 
Chopstick is a workhorse, man. We sell chopsticks at HEB. You can get the chopstick pack. All right. I want to make sure. Look at these guys. Ooh, that's really Gently pretty. Gently removing the claws. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. There it is. I see it. Oh, it's coming. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Okay, and then really I mean, quickly. It's gonna get, you know, mushed around anyway. So, yes, Chardonnay goes with everything, specifically lobster, because, yes, Chardonnay and lobster. And then um, it also goes really well with, like, the fattiness, right? So there's a little bit of that mayonnaise in there, that avocado. So that brute cuts the, cuts the fat really nicely. Absolutely. Right. Lobster. And then I'm going to show you all how to Boy, I get... bet you'd love a pair of chopsticks right now, wouldn't you? No, man. <laughs> the chopsticks are the workhorse in the kitchen, and I don't have any. <laughs> I'm going to use the claw, the other there side of the claw. I'm going to be resourceful. All right, all guys. Right oh, there man. It there it is. Come yeah, that's on. all right. You know, we win some, lose some. Ah, there, we there we go. There we go. All right, now is. really quickly to Stayed get with it. You this. Hung in there. I call this the elbow meat. Right? And I use, again, some kitchen shears, good kitchen shears. Now, Cammy, you need to be really, Cammy, right? Yep. Courtney, Cam, okay. Um, be careful when you're using your knife on this because they do have yeah. spine, they're spiny, but you're just gonna cut them and then in a couple of places. Cammy, another way you can do it too if you don't have your shears is take your knife flat and just kind of crush it first. Yep. And then you can kind of get a flatter surface to chop it. You want me to show you that method? I can. But I want to make sure that I get, and then you'll just pick out this meat like so. Here, Tompkins, Perfect. like this. I don't have. Yeah, just give a little press to it and kind of crush it and then, you know. Good call, Tompkins. I'm telling you, I've been eating my walnuts. Brain right. function, soaring. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there now, like, I've never, do you use the mallet in lo for lobster, or is that only for crab? I, I just, <laughs> it's Slippery. magically disappeared. That was the, <laughs> that was the one magic act we had planned for tonight. It disappeared before <laughs> your very eyes. For my next <laughs> trick. All right, here we go. We'll do one more, and then I've, I turned my grill on earlier because I want to grill some bread. They're like, remember that time we watched that girl like peel that lobster for? No, you remember when we watched that girl do the magic trick where she went to smash it? Made the lobster disappear. <laughs> All right. We'll fix that in post. Just Don't pulling worry. that stuff out of there. But really, like I said before, be careful. They do have all these crazy spines on them. All right. Yeah, Cammy, next time we're going to put on your shopping list pair of good kitchen shoes. You can also just do tails, y'all. Like, if you don't want to mess with this, all this work, you can also do tails. All right. There we go. You can make it a family thing. I'm going to save this and eat it. You the so lobster meat out of the... For sure. Well, if you were in, like, Maryland, it would be, you'd have, like, a crab oil, and then you just sit there and pick crabs. There you go. It's so totally a thing. All right. Cammie said she got lucky and only did tails. There you go. Oh, okay. Smart, Chop smart, 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 smart. Makes it much easier. All right. And that's a great way, Cammie, too, to make it more uh, more weekday weekday friendly. Okay, so I am literally, I'm gonna move this over here so y'all can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm mixing it up. Oh, yeah. Look at that, look how beautiful that is. I'm gonna let this sit, let everything marry. While that happens, we have some time left. So I am going to do some grilled bread really quickly, just a couple of pieces, because I want everyone to see um, how we're gonna serve this beautiful salad. I also have some bread that I've already grilled, but I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna cut it. And you can do, um, I'm gonna do it on the bias. How does that sound? So now why on the bias, Chef? So the reason, good question. So I like to do on the bias, A for presentation, but B, you have more surface area to put more good stuff on there, right? That satisfies both my, right? my questions. Like we have it. time to grill some bread? I think we have some time. 
So you can throw it on the grill and then start doing your burrata because yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm you teased me with the burrata, burrata and then it's, it's been marinating. Right. Literally really... for the grilled bread, just like this. And you can, uh-oh. This is where the spray oil comes in super handy. Really nice coating on the surface. Yep. Salt, pepper, like literally you can't put enough olive oil on grilled bread if you ask me. That's just a personal. In my opinion, Charlotte, you can never put enough olive oil on anything. I yeah. use it like most people do ketchup. I could drink it, yeah. Okay, and again, salt and pepper. And we're gonna take this to the grill. Also, I am taking, oh, it's got pepper all over me. Oof. I'm gonna take our hot dog buns. So I'm using the bakery, like naturally leavened, scratch made hot dog buns. Um, I learned this trick camping, y'all. I didn't know this before. But you take the bun. First you take the bun and you smash it. But you put it on, sorry. You put it on the grill. And you, all we want to do is we're just going to soften them just a little bit, right? And then what we're going to do, steam we're going to put them back in the bag and we're going to steam them. And so they get a little bit of that toast, a little bit of char. Soft. And, yep. So then I'm going to do, I'm going to turn, woo, this guy's high. All right, Tompkins. Yeah, Cammy's with you on the hot dog buns. They, they are really good. They're, I think that's what you want. Like a typical lobster roll, you just want really soft bread, right? Like what's the, what's the typical, like are there any, are there any no-nos for a lobster roll so, as far as that goes? So again, it goes back to your personal preference, right? So whatever you like and whatever you want um, is what you're gonna, is what you're gonna do. So most, most people or most lobster rolls are served on like a white hot dog bun, like a, like a traditional like, like this, ah, glad you asked, Tompkins, I have some. So these are like plain old white hot dog buns um, and they're split top right here. So you would Love just it. open this guy up and you would put the, the filling in the top, just like that, but it needs to be soft. Super and soft. actually, so in our seafood market right now, our meal simple, we have um, lobster rolls already made. It's the lobster salad. I love those. Look at this. I'm telling you, we thought of everything. No, it's the lobster every... salad and a delicious, like, split, like, split top, like, roll. And it's, you buy it and it's it. It's it. I love it. I'm here for it. It's the best thing. A little grilled bread. Love yep. that. All right. Now, I've gotten these warm, right? Warm. They're a little toasty on the bottom. I'm going to shove these guys back in here and they're going to steam up a little bit. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you how we're going to plate that. I do this that. with my tortillas when I make tacos. I do them all at once and I tie them back up so they just kind of steam in that bag. Great put... tip, chef. I mean, every now and then I have a good one. I would say more than every now and then. All right. Some bread. A little grilled bread. This is where I would take my garlic clove and rub it all over those. Oh, for bread. your, what, for your fetunta? My fetunta. Your fetunta. I like how you said that. All right. I love that. I'm going to grab our strawberries, our guac. We're going to get ready for plating. I'm going to do a my thing. I'm gonna do the burrata. Ooh, I switched them. Scratch that, reverse it. Okay. So, here is all of our macerated fruit. It's absolutely beautiful. I am going to put some greens on the bottom because I want to capture all of that beautiful juice that has been lingering or that we've created. Gonna work as a natural dressing. Oh, yes, it's so good. And then we're going to finish this with the burrata and the mint, and it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And then we're going to plate up the other guys. Here we go. Just a little bit of greens. And you can use arugula if you wanted. Love arugula. Peppery notes. Oh, man. Okay. There really is. If you walk the, uh, while you're assembling all that, Charlotte, if you walk the produce department, Locally, you're, you're close, HEB, whatever HEB is close to you. They have so many brand new, like different bag salads, different styles of salad, like already chopped, pre washed, ready to go, a little bit more like funky spring mix. We've got the little gems, we've got the rose mix. There's all this great salad. So, especially as we move into the warmer weather, it is like salad Absolutely. season. Absolutely. So, Check here, here is our beautiful burrata. It looks like a poached egg. You can serve it on top if you'd like and drizzle it for presentation, but I like to break it up and let yes. everything like ooze together. Pull and it, it apart. Yeah, and it just, and it's easier to serve. So, I'm going to pull this apart and you can see come all that beautiful on, cream come, come out. It's all that like creamy curd. Get oh, it's so good. Oh, I love it. 
You can find burrata typically, not every H-E-B has it, but typically if you're going to find the burrata, it's going to be in your deli section. It is. Where all the other fresh mozzarellas are being held, you'll find it there. And it's a really reasonable price for what it is. And we're going to throw uh, some mint on top. You could use basil oh, yeah. if you want. If you can't find burrata, regular fresh mozzarella works just as beautifully. Um, even like um, like a feta would work or a goat cheese would be delicious like in this saltier, recipe too. More. So just really quickly, we'll do a chiffonade of mint. Fresh chiffonade. Chiffonade of mint. And so we just kind of layer up our leaves here. Like anything chiffonade on top of something like that is just going to add... I just like saying chiffonade, and I just, it's like, it's a great little culinary term to like throw at people. And just be like, oh, it's a chiffonade. Okay. Honey, just roll them you up. chiffonade that basil for me so I can throw it on top of this? It's a chiffonade of basil. All right, sprinkle. It smells so good. Oh my God, this is like dessert, yeah. everybody. I love it. I'm telling it. you, mint is good on everything. It's Extra not drizzle. just meant for garnishing desserts. No, man, mint is great for everything. It's not just for iced tea and yep, for... some of that. There you go. Oh. A little more, little more, please. A little more. Oh, so there we go. We're going to six dollars of, of balsamic. Wonderful. Look at that guy. Ta-da. Let's get our guac. I have some bread that I already grilled. Ta-da. It's all coming together. This guy, oh. look how pretty this is. This is so beautiful and so colorful. I'm just gonna throw this in here like that. I feel like this would be a good, that'd be a good brunch thing to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like get, some, get some croissants along with your bread. Absolutely. And I've got some grilled bread here and I have some not grilled bread. You could throw some naan or flatbreads into the mix if you'd like. Absolutely love it. And then, Boom. get out of here avocado, get out of here. Perfect, and now, I'm going to get these guys, grab our plate. At this point, it's all coming together. You should be on your second glass of wine. Second gin martini. No, so, gin martini a little stronger. Maybe they're nice. And they're you nice and, and soft. I'm going to break them apart. Look at this. They're just super, super tender. These are beautiful. Are great. And then put them like this. It's enough, right? How do y'all feel about that? That's perfect. And then, so these aren't cut, so you're just gonna, you can cut them on the side if you wanted to do hot dogs, but we're gonna go like this. Cut these guys open just like this. A little slit down the center here. I love it. That's important. On the top like that, that's how, a, that's how a lobster roll should be. And then, so I was telling, describe it as like the, the potato smush, but nobody knew what the potato smush was. Um, so you just want to open these guys up a little bit like that. And then, here we go. Made a um, better the lobster. The lobster. I love it. You sound like, y'all, oh, look at this big chunks of lobster. And then, who was my friend that said we needed to season it up? I agree with him. Tammy. Gotta season that always, a little bit. Always season. If we teach you nothing in these classes, I hope you get the fact that we love to season food. Seasoning food makes everything better. It does. Season it all. I agree. From your fruits to your desserts to your lobster salads. Your lobster. Oh man, the avocado with this is like super fantastic. I love I really like the color of it all. It's really beautiful, right? Look at that guy. Oh. I got, I'm crowding the plate here. I'm starving right now. This is gonna be so good. And I'm seeing like all the lobster going in and I wanna like. I mean, it depends on how much you like your friends, how much you wanna put in there. That's a good, I mean, hey, you know, that, that's a, that is a generous amount of lobster in those lobster rolls. Right? I'm sorry, for a family of four right there, like I'm in, I'm in a good, I'm in a good spot. Do. I'm going to do With one everything? more, yep. just because we have room for one more. Look at this. And that's it. A little more. Y'all, this is it. It's fantastic. I mean, look how easy that was. Al fresco Boom. dining for the summertime. Oh. How easy is that? I'm super excited. I'm super as, excited. You're, as you're wrapping all that up, don't forget, you can go to our HEB uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash HEB. For this and other great classes, you can obviously watch all the past episodes. We want to keep adding great tools to your culinary yes. toolbox. What else, Chef? That's it. 
That's it. I'm glad you guys came. We snuck in so much produce. We eat so much, so many surprising seasonal produce things. I love it. Um, like you said, check out the lineup, hb.com slash casas or YouTube, youtube.com slash hb. Thank you guys for coming.